And sometimes Japanese songs will have those, and I'm like, I don't know, I don't know what you're saying. Like, what does this mean? Like, the direct translation sometimes doesn't make sense. And so I have to turn it into something that sounds like it would have originally been written in English. And sometimes that's challenging especially with the more somber, uh, poetic, like beautiful songs, it can be a little challenge. But I always will favor making the lyrics sound like, they're, like they were originally written in English, rather than sticking to the official translation. It's always good to stick close to the translation, because you don't want to like do your own thing and kind of um, stray from the song, but I think it's important to kind of translate it for the listener. If the listener can't understand what the lyrics are about, or like, you know, <laughs> that's where you kind of lost him. But it, it, it is a challenge. It takes me a long time. Uh, but it's a, a fun puzzle to try to figure it out. <laughs> yeah? Well, on that same question, it, that's a prime example with the new fruit baskets. Yeah. You actually translated it before they ever even start putting subtitles down the bottom. Right. And on the Facebook fan page, you're all growing up. So she goes, look, she did it. And I took her link and dropped it in the fan page. Oh. And everybody went. I love her. I need, to, I need to follow her. I think you have fans in her already. But everybody wanted the English version of the new song. Mm. Most of us didn't like it. Yeah, I, when I, the moment I heard it, I was like, yes, I'm like, I love Fruits Basket. Um, and I actually had an opportunity to voice Young Yuki in the dub, which was, that was amazing. And when I heard that the new songs would be sung, like new songs, I thought they'd redo the old ones, but that they were new songs. I was very excited for that. Um, but funny story about that song. We had a hard time translating it because the meanings have so many different, Japanese words can have multiple meanings, so the translations could be very varied. Uh, and so when I, did, when I saw the official translation come out, because I had my translator translate it, when I saw the official translation come out, I was like, oh, I kind of messed up here and there, like kind of strayed a little bit too far from the direct translation. Uh, but I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. It's, really, it's a really cute song. I want to do the ending so badly, but I have no time. <laughs> Did you have a question? Yeah, you ever, you ever do the cartoon voice for, for evil stuff? Do I, do I ever do voices for evil stuff? Yeah. I wish. I'm always cast as like the sweet, like soft-spoken, like girl next door. But like I would love to voice like a villain. That would be so No, no, I'm talking about like, like if you go like to uh, a McDonald's drive through you try to do your... Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. I wish I was like that uh, outgoing to just yeah. like... Drive up to the drive. -thru. Yeah, drive through it. Yeah. Uh, whenever my grandma does call me, though, I do answer in weird voices, and it throws uh -oh. her off every time. You think she'd get used to it, but she doesn't. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I do do that, but I, I, I don't think I feel do it to a stranger. They might think I was a little weird. <laughs> so I'm not sure how I'll recover from that. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> it'll be fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, what songs uh, do you get a lot, uh, a lot of advice about? Uh, to do a, to do a song. Uh, I always try to like see what people are requesting. Uh, usually, what you guys are requesting is what I should do next. Uh, you guys are usually always a step ahead of me. Like sometimes there's a song that I haven't heard yet, and I'm like, oh, everyone's requesting this one song. What is it? And I'll go listen to it. I'm like, yeah, this rocks. You guys know me. And I'll cover it. Um, people are. It's a good kind of question. People will ask me to like redo old covers all the time. Um, like, I redid My Dearest, people are asking me to redo, like, Departures from A uh, Guilty Crown. Um, a bunch of fairy tale songs and, like, uh, One Piece songs, everyone's like, can you just cover all of them? And I'm like, oh, I'd love to, but, like, that would take me 10 million years. <laughs> uh, maybe eventually. Uh, um, uh, there was that uh, anime, oh, I forgot the title of it, it was really popular, Domestic Girlfriend, a few seasons ago? Okay, okay. Okay, well, not crazy. But yeah, there was an opening to that that I really wanted to cover, but I looked at the translation and I was like, I don't have the mental patience for this translation right now. <laughs> so maybe eventually, maybe like when it gets nostalgic in a few years. <laughs> Any Gundam uh, stuff? Yeah, so I do like the nostalgia albums. Um, and uh, Mecca was supposed to be one of the themes like for Nostalgia 4, but I goofed and like forgot about it. And so now we're on Nostalgia 7 and Mecca is going to be Nostalgia 8. So it'll be like next, like after, like in the new year, probably in March. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of Gundam songs for that. Um, Gundam C and Gundam C Destiny were my first like big animes. And I know a lot of people like don't really like Gundam C and Gundam C Destiny. Okay, but like it, I treasure it, and the songs are beautiful. Um, but yeah, like uh, and Double Zero, Gundam Double Zero, good, all good songs. All those shows have good songs. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions?
People in the back are quiet. They're not even looking at me. It's fine. I see you, but you don't see me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, go ahead. What was your, uh, who's your favorite singer to work with? My favorite singer to work with? Ooh, I have to like pick out between my friends. <laughs> um, everyone is really fun to work with. I mean, I work with Nate the most, I think. Uh, he's a cool guy, uh, really good, talented guy, uh, fun to work with. Um, but I'm actually working on a collaborative album right now uh, called Unity. I've talked about it like on Patreon to people. Um, but it's a collaborative album, and so like, there's like 15 artists on it, and it's a bunch of like featured instrumentalists and stuff, so I'm excited for that. Um, a lot of really cool artists that I never thought I'd be able to collab with, but I reached out to them, and they were like, yeah, I'd be down. Um, so I'm excited for that. But I, it, some of my favorite people to, to collab with are on that. I had a panel with Caleb earlier, and Caleb's on it. Um, so I'm excited, but I can't talk about it yet. If you join me on Patreon, you can know all the details. But I can't say them right now. <laughs> Soon though, don't worry. Um, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Any other questions? Anything at all? Does not have to be work related? Can be voice acting or anything? Yeah. Um, I don't. Even though I went to art school, I don't draw any of the visuals. Uh, I hire artists for that, and actually, usually when I go to cons, I always go to the artist alley. I'm like, who, like, whose work kind of has this vibe? Like, because I'm always working on like 30 covers at a time, and so I'm like, oh, I want this show to have art. And so I'll, I'll kind of look for an artist that's either passionate about that show or like has a style that can mesh well with that. Um, and even though I don't draw them, I do like talk to the artist and I uh, collaborate with them, and I'm like, I would like like this kind of like feel of these scenes and like this character and maybe put like my persona in this outfit or something cute. Um, that's a lot of fun because artists are so creative and can draw all kinds of amazing. It's amazing what they come up with. Yeah, I have like my core artists that I use a lot, um, but I do like branching out and working with new artists because it's fun to like collaborate with new teams. That's like the beauty of what I of what I do is like work with like anyone. <laughs> on Hells. Hells was so much fun. Uh, so if you guys don't know, I voice Rene Amagane in this animated movie called Hells. Um, and Team Four Star helped uh, produce it. Um, and the, the great people at Sound Creative Studios recorded it and they're amazing. It was a lot of fun. Um, the movie, uh, it's a very long movie um, and Rene is also like an awesome character. I was really excited to get cast as her. Um, she was a lot of fun in the audition. So. But I really enjoyed the process. Um, the style is so cool. Um, the art style is very like brush-like, uh, which was difficult to match the flaps with because the flaps were kind of weird, not like normal um, with the anime. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. Love that show. Love that movie. Well, lots of little twists there. <laughs> I can't like say anything without spoiling it because there's like there's like four different twists in the movie. Um, but yeah, good times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all the anime that you worked on, uh, which is uh, your favorite? Which, which is my favorite. Um, like voice acting wise? Yes. Yeah. Um, I really liked being a part of Card Captor Sakura Clear Card because I was a huge fan of the original series when I saw that they were casting for it. I was like, oh, yeah, like, yay, all my friends, yay. And then like, there was like, oh, we're auditioning for the new character. And I was like, new character? I was like, what? And I went in and I was so nervous, but Caitlin's amazing. And she ended up casting me as Akiho. Um, I had a lot of fun with her. Um, if you guys haven't watched Clear Card, I won't spoil it but it ended in the cliffhanger and I hate everything. And I wanted to come back <laughs> so badly. Um, and actually, like, uh, the person that played Kaito, which is like um, Akiko's butler, I became really good friends with Brandon after that. And we're like, best buds now, that's really great. He's really sweet. So I have a lot to thank for that show. It was very fun. Um, Hinamatsuri was also very fun. Um, really, Anzu is a sweet, sweet child. And uh, she sings phenomenally. Best singing I've ever done, ever. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's horrible. <laughs> but, uh, loved that. It was great. And the director was like, oh, she's, she's going to sing a song. And I was like, yay, I'm so excited. And then I watched it in Japanese. And I was like, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Is there a hand over here? Did I imagine it? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I'm just kind of curious. Um, I guess, and maybe you kind of possibly answer this like in a different way. Mm -hmm. So like a different question asked. But 
I, I always ask this with people who have done like voice acting or any kind of like production whatsoever. Um, in my experience, a lot of people I interview, they um, it's like it's almost like a 50-50 split. Some of them have some like kind of like schooling experience, whether it's acting, whether it's singing, um, um, or maybe they've just gotten like production somehow like when they started off through school. Like I know you said you went to school for art, but like um, particularly like in your experience, um, maybe how would you quantify like your success thus far? Was it people like you met like through school? Was it people like you met outside, or was it really like more or less in this industry? Was it just you kind of grinding? Because I feel like I feel like there's a lot of people that go to school for maybe like um, even like musical theater or something, for instance. And they, like when I listen to them, I can I would be like, well, like you actually can change your voice and animate yourself like really well. You can completely do a different character. So like, what's your take on that? Um, yeah, I I think personally, I started YouTube uh, when I was like 14 back in like 2006 and I also started voice acting back then. I didn't have any formal training. Um, I took like music lessons as a child, like piano and singing, you know, when you're like four and your mom's like, go do this thing. Uh, you're tortured for an hour singing and playing piano. That was me. Um, but I didn't really take any classes uh, for acting. I actually hated singing on stage. I had like horrible stage fright. I was like in band and I would pretend to play the flute, not really play, because I was just so petrified. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I went to the, uh, college for graphic design, but I wanted, I, like, halfway through my um, junior year, YouTube took off. I was like, shoot, maybe I should have majored in music, um, but I couldn't switch my major. But I learned a lot from that, and I now I have a graphic design background. It helps me. But there are people who uh, train their whole lives and are amazing at it, and um, I kind of wish I had, had, had had more formal training, wish I had participated more in theater, and gotten those skills sooner. Um, maybe I'd be somewhere different now, but um, I think I learned a lot, a lot from grinding, from watching people like on YouTube and watching and going to panels and asking questions. And uh, I did take some voice acting classes, classes later, like after college, after in college, and um, like with some voice actors, they offer classes. Um, yeah, I learned a lot from online, just practicing. Uh, it's been it's been a long time. Uh, 2006 was like you in it like a million years ago, but. Um, yeah, you can learn a lot from online now, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's normally what I get. From right, yeah. Well, it's just it's crazy because like, I just feel like there's, especially now, like, when we see a lot of people that have gone to college for a lot of those things, mm -hmm. and like, we're starting to see some of those positions uh, kind of dwindle a little bit. So like, I always I always like talking to people about that because I feel like, again, there's a lot of people that maybe need to hear that so that way they know that there are like other outlets. Oh, yeah, there. yeah. You don't have to major in acting to be an actor. Uh, no time limit <laughs> to that. You can always learn new skills. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? People in the back rows? No? Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, tomorrow me and Caleb are having a concert at 3 o'clock. You guys can go there. We're also having an autograph signing directly after. Um, I'm selling like posters and prints and plushies and like keychains and things. Uh, but I can just like sign your little catalog we need to if you want. But we're having a fun concert. So yeah. Um yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. I saw on the YouTube <laughs> channel you did edition for the for the AX Idol. Oh, okay. So yeah yeah. So um uh AX Idol was a thing in California that Bang Zoom and Bondi, I think it was, used to put on uh, every year, which is like, it's like a voice acting competition, also with a singing competition. Okay. And I auditioned for the voice acting competition in 2011, and I, I happened to win it uh, like, somehow. Okay. Um, but that was the last year they did AX Idol, and they okay. changed it to open auditions after that. But that was a lot of fun. It's a learning experience. It was right in the beginning. Can you do it? The, uh, the what? The what? The, that the character voice. Uh, I don't remember what it was. It was like huh. eight, nine years yep. ago. <laughs> I can show you. Oh, I don't know. No, you think so? Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't even remember what it. I think I. I don't remember what I auditioned. I think I auditioned with Tyga from Toradora, and then I remember for the final it was some K on thing. Okay. But yeah, you had to like voice act live. So like they brought you on stage and they had the screen up and you had to like match the flaps. 
and it was really interesting <laughs> because you had like a whole crowd of people, which in real life you're in a tiny booth and it's the director and the engineer and maybe someone else. Um, but it was a lot of fun. It was a good experience. Um, but if you guys are interested in voice acting, they do do the open auditions now uh, in LA during Anime Expo, and I think Bang Zoom also does it other other cons as well now. But yeah. <laughs> I just don't have the screen and stuff to do it live, so. <laughs> Technical difficulties, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah. If no one else uh, asks questions, I'm going to start asking you questions. Great. Uh -oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, so, did you expect your voice work in Xenoverse 2 to gain as much fame as it did? <laughs> no. In a second. Uh, had you already been on? Okra's list previously, or how were you approached for uh, um, voice work? Um, I forgot how I got that. Uh, they brought me in for it. Um, so I was I was in a game called Dragon Ball Z Universe 2. I played one of the playable characters. I think I'm voice 12. Ooh. 12. I'm pretty sure it's 12. Whatever, it's fine. But yeah, if you like make a custom customizable character and you choose a female character, I'm 12 for that option. And which one? Um, uh, Saiyan or yeah, you can do anything. It's just like you like make no, your character like, and then you just choose the voice. Yeah, but the character you play. So I can like play the character that you play. Okay. Literally, I just scream and make battle noises the entire time. It's great. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I meow. I think I meow once. <laughs> you must have had to do a lot of yelling as the Dragon Ball. Thing. Yeah, it was Dragon Ball. It's like a, just a lot of reacts and a lot of like uh, of the like Gallic gun and all the attacks. We had to do like a bunch of those. A lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I didn't think it would gain, so uh, it was really funny, I was actually, the game came out, and I was like, yeah, I wonder if anyone's, like, played it, and I went on to YouTube and, like, to see who, maybe, like, I was like, maybe someone's, just, like, chosen one of my voices, like, maybe not, there's, like, 30 optional voices, and I saw that uh, Team Four Shark chose my voice for theirs, and I was like, oh my god, yes, so there was, like, so many videos where I could, like, listen to my performance, it was really cool, um, but yeah, people come up to me all the time, and they're like, oh, you're put in, and I'm like, oh yeah, that one time I meowed for a Dragon Ball character. It was fun. It was a good experience. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. A lot of screaming. It was like three hours of screaming. You did the, your voice for Putin. TFS did that. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> they just randomly, they're like, bye. They're like, we like the one that meows. Or what, I forgot what they said. And I was like, oh god. <laughs> oh my god. Did you enjoy watching all that from start to finish? No, I, I clicked through it because I wanted to hear what it sounded like produced. Because when you go to record something, you never like hear it all put together. Uh, you, just, you don't even get to hear it played back, honestly. You just like record it and I'm like, that sounds like a scream. Next line. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's cool to like see it, like someone play it and like, have my voice come out of the TV. Yeah, I'm like, weird. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. Did you have a second question? No. The guy in the red. What's your name? No. no good Did I answer both questions? Are there two questions? Am I crazy? I'm crazy. Let's go on. Next question. <laughs> Did you have one? Wait, what's happening? We're gonna rewind and we're gonna play. Okay, any questions? <laughs> no? Yeah, thanks. Uh, do you have any funny booth stories? Funny? Like sound booths. Booth stories. You know, it always happens, and I'm like, ah, this will be one of those stories I tell at cons. It'll be like the cool actors, and then I can never remember. Um, <laughs> there was one time I got pulled in uh, to work with Kyle Phillips, who does a lot of shows at Funimation, and I was like, cool, I've never worked with this director before, awesome, so excited, and he's like, okay, you're going to be reporter A, B, and I was like, awesome, I can do reporter A, B, like nothing, like, <laughs> let's do it, uh -oh. and the, it was a huge paragraph, uh, and so we, we previewed it, and I was like, okay, there's, there's, some, there's some big words in here, but like, I can say big words, and uh, we get to like the middle of whatever she is saying. And she says this word, and I can never remember the word, and Kyle can never remember it either. We have to look it up every single time in the system. But I could not say this word for the life of me. And um, they got to the point where we were like on like take like six or seven, and like the directors were trying to pronounce it, and now they were saying it wrong. And I was, and they're like, well, we can't change the word. Like this word like means something in the show. And I was like, oh, it was like this so embarrassing. So I was like, the director's never going to remember me again. Like I just, I can't do reporter AP. Like what am I gonna do? <laughs> like, um, but he went on to cast me in like Overlord and he monster. So it was, it was fine. And like we laugh about the story now. I wish I could remember what the word was. It was, it was like such a stupid word. You're like, ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> but it was very embarrassing. It was great. Loved it. So you did get to. We did. We did get through it eventually. 
I literally said the word like a hundred times. Like, I'm gonna get this. Like, we're not. I'm not giving up now. Um, but it's a funny story. Mm -hmm. Other funny stories. A lot of like b like bombs. So in voice acting, uh, in anime dubbing especially, uh, one actor goes in at a time and records. Um, so one actor will always be first, and you have the opportunity to leave bombs for your fellow actors, which is pretty much you just like say like a funny line that matches the flaps to try to mess up the actor that comes in after you. So there's been a lot of like funny bombs people like leave me or I'll leave someone. Um, but uh, actors that have been doing it for a long time don't laugh and I just don't have that ability yet and I just crack up and I can't stop laughing. Uh, so there's been a lot of those. They're all inappropriate usually so I probably can't repeat them. <laughs> it's great, I love it. Um, but that's always a lot of fun. I was like, can I leave the bomb here? Like, can I? Can I do it? Like, please. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, Hinamatsuri was when we left a lot. We left a lot of, a lot of bombs. I know that Kyle like uploaded the outtakes onto YouTube, so you can watch the bombs. Like, he like saved them, uh, so you can watch them for his stuff. I know he uploads that a lot, and they're a lot of fun to watch. Uh, it's more like behind the scenes. You can like hear the director like laughing through the glass, like muffled, muffled laughter. It's great. <laughs> um, God, I need more booth stories. I know actors that have gotten like trapped in the booth before and like gone crazy because they were like they were, they were trapped in the booth for like four hours and the way you see it's great. <laughs> um, I don't really have any. Um, when I'm recording at home, my dog, uh, I have like I have like a recording booth and the door is completely glass and my dog likes to come up and put his head like right against the glass and like stare at me like this and I'm like I don't know what you want but he'll just stay with his face against the glass and like stare at me. <laughs> That's always great. I get focused on it all the time. He's like, what are you doing in there for hours on end, Mom? Uh, favorite past. <laughs> I think he gets so confused. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I need to like, think of more booth stories. Hmm, I need to like, write them down. They're like dreams. They just, they're fleeting. <laughs> Any other questions in the back? No? No. Shaking your head. Any cool things you guys are doing this con weekend? Has anyone gone to the fire shows? I heard they're awesome. Blank faces. Yes. <laughs> fire show. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> uh, what's, the, uh, what's the weirdest uh, question that anyone asked you? The weird, I get asked if I'll date people a lot, and that's always a great one. Love that one. <laughs> I'm always like, ah, next question! <laughs> um, I don't know, everyone's usually really polite, which, uh, and that's why I really like like this industry and like this like fan base in general because you guys are all really polite. But every once in a while, I'll get one person that's like, "Look, well, you need me," and I'm like, "No." <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> it's always a great one. Um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, do you have any memorable fan encounters? Um, yeah, there was. It always comes to mind. There was one time I was a guest in Berlin. And uh, there were two little girls, they were like six and seven, they were absolutely precious. And like I had never met a fan that young before, so it was kind of like, oh you sweet children, like on YouTube all by yourselves, like what? <laughs> um, but yeah, they were, they were like, they were so adorable, oh, so cute. Um, and I always like, I always just like see their faces, because like that was just so cute. Because I'm always just used to like my age just seeing my stuff, so someone that was like so young, uh, just like talking about anime, it was really cute. Yeah, that was a really cute one. Um, someone gave me like a life-sized picture of myself uh, once. It was like what? a giant scroll of myself, and it was made up of tiny images of myself. And I was like, "This is this is cool." And my mom got it framed, and it's hung in her garage, like professionally <laughs> framed. It's a giant image of myself. And people walk in, and they're like, "Ah, this is your daughter." And I had to be like. I mean, I didn't print this, like, I didn't want her to hang a giant photo of myself. My mom, my mom's great. <laughs> I know, I'm so, I don't, I don't bring her to cons anymore because of this. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a great one. Um, I have a plushie wall at home. I started collecting uh, stuffed animals, like plushies, from different shows and anime. Mm. And somehow it turned into a wall. I literally stabbed them and put them onto a pegboard and they just covered the entire <laughs> oh. wall. Uh, so it's become like a joke with my fans like to give me 
plushies at cons and I'll like stab them on the board oh, no. and they will live there for eternity. Um, it's great. <laughs> um, but yeah, I always get really funny plushies that people either make or like they, they find somehow. And those are always really sweet to have because that would happen forever on the wall. Um, but yeah, so you guys have any plushies that you find, I will gladly adopt all plush children <laughs> and stab them on my wall. <laughs> oh, okay. mm -hmm. You're martyr. Yeah, so they're immortalized forever. <laughs> Jesus Christ plushie up there, he's hidden. He is, he is immortalized forever oh, on the plushie no. wall. It's great. He's hiding behind a Miku, just as the Bible yeah, it's it. Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> you can like, find him though, because I was like, maybe this isn't okay. Like, maybe I should just hide him a little bit. Like, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, don't let your boyfriend see. Yeah, <laughs> like this is my plushie collection. I actually had I, I moved recently, and I had I had movers come, uh, and they were uh -oh. like, oh, like what kind of like like what kind of furniture do you have? And I was like, oh, like you know, like a couch and whatever. And I asked some art pieces. They're like, oh, what kind of art pieces? And I was like, you know, like some paintings, and I have like an art installation. They're like, what kind of art installation? <laughs> I was like, don't worry about it. Like it's just this thing. And I well, it was covered up. It's like it's soft. Like it won't be damaged. Uh -oh. And they came and they were like. Ah, <laughs> okay. I was like, just wrap it up, be quiet, and get it out of here. <laughs> like, I don't, um, that, was, that was very, that was great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh boy. And they didn't know what anime was. Like, I think one of them was an anime fan, but like, he was, he was just shocked by the sheer amount of plushies I had. And they were like, literally attached onto this wall. And the back of the board, have you ever, have you guys ever seen like the back of a Barbie box? How like the little things are twisted. Oh, yeah. That's the back of this board. It's like a Barbie box from hell. Okay. Just like wires everywhere. It's horrible. But it's great. <laughs> These uh. workers. That'll be a story they'll tell. <laughs> Take a picture of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Hey, I always have a favorite song that you get to sign. Favorite songs. Oh, I, I hate this, this question so hard because I I love like all the songs I do. Like I do them for reasons that I just love each song. But ones that have stuck with me, I love um, "Call Your Here," "Call My," call, "Call Your Heroes," which is the Attack on Titan medley I did. Love that was so much fun to do. Um, I loved "Veracity" recently, which was a lot of fun. Um, "Crossing Field" will always have a special place in my heart because it's the reason. It, it's my most uh, viewed video, as a lot of people came to my channel for that cover. So it's really special to my heart. And I'm actually singing it tomorrow. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> like by tomorrow at 3 p.m. Yeah, it's secret. Don't worry. It's spoiled now or whatever. <laughs> so I'm singing that one tomorrow. I'm very excited. Um, man, I got a lot of songs in the works that I think will be my favorites once they're finished. Um, I just finished uh, uh, Grinch, which is like the the. Demon Slayer opening by Lisa. I really enjoyed working on that song. Um, the lyrics kind of uh, hit me like where I am right now in my life, and so that was really fun to work on. I got to kind of channel myself more into lyrics, and not just be like, I think this is what the act, like the, what the character should be saying. Like I think this is what the singer means by these words. Uh, so that was really cool. But yeah, <laughs> I actually have a playlist on YouTube that's like my favorite covers. So yeah, there's <laughs> so many in there though. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, in the back. Thank you, all for the yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> okay, no worries. All questions are accepted. Where do you get the English translations for the song? So, uh, record labels will release like official translations, but there are also fan translations that people come out with, and I also hire a translator. So, usually I'll pull up them all because Japanese lyrics have so many meanings, like their words can have double or triple meaning, meanings. Um, so sometimes translators, much like people that do English covers, will all have different lyrics. So by reading the same line translated by five or six artists, you, like, you can get a better idea of what the line actually means. Uh, and like, they'll use different words and different adjectives, and you're like, oh, that, that's a better choice. That's a three-letter word, or a three-syllable word, or a two-syllable word. So you can kind of get a better, uh, closer translation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, you can just like Google, I just, like Google them, like like pick, like pull out like a million tabs. It's great. <laughs> Any others? Oh. Whatever shall we do? Yes. <laughs> um, okay. it, uh, like, I guess like now that you got like a good amount of experience, like do you like what are your your I guess like near goals, and then what are like far right goals if you thought about them or had them? 
Uh, I definitely would like to sing for more official stuff, which like, I can't talk about stuff, but like, Don Rappin or some stuff. That Do you want to work with them? Like, in um, Wait, what? Do you want to work with anybody in particular? Oh yeah, like tons, tons of artists out there, but they're like, they're way, way beyond my reach right now. Um, but I'm doing that Unity album, uh, which I reached out to a bunch of different YouTubers. Um, one of them is Peter Collins, who's a huge YouTuber. I, I've loved him for many years, and I reached out to him, and I was like, hey, like, you followed me on Twitter, but like, not sure, like, would you want to be on this? And he's like the sweetest guy ever, and we're doing, um, the song premiere, Weight of the World, together. Uh, he recorded it and it sounds beautiful. This, the album's not done yet, so I can't really say it. But he was someone that I always wanted to work with, like ever since I started YouTube. He was like one of the big ones when I first started. Um, so he was a huge inspiration, so I wanted to work with him. Um, kind of other YouTubers that I, I would love to work with. Um, but yeah, a lot of them are on Unity, which like Unity's kind of a secret right now, so I can't like spill all the beans. <laughs> Do you have like anything like super long term that you kind of like maybe you've already kind of had like floating around in your head that um, gonna take more work? Or? Yeah, I mean I'd love to collaborate with uh, more like official stuff. Like I, I worked with um, Yutaka Yamaha, uh, who's over in Japan. He did the he did the OST for Tokyo. I did some songs for him. I did some other songs that ended up not being used for some other shows, uh, which is darn because they were so good. Um, <laughs> but I would love to like work on. Maybe in the future, maybe I'll produce a game or not produce a game and do all the music for it. That would be a lot of fun. Um, maybe a show in the future will have all the songs though, and I'll be lucky enough to be one of the actors and maybe I can write stuff for it. Uh, there's stuff I have done for like, some really cool titles, but I can't talk about it because they're not released yet. It kills me. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so I came out with an EP called Hourglass a few years ago, um, and that was kind of a labor of love. Uh, didn't do as well as my covers. My covers are always late. They, they have a lot more views than it's fine. Whatever, it's fine. <laughs> but I do love original music, and I'm working on a full-length album now. Uh, but it's just taking a lot of time because a new season comes out every three months, and I'm like, oh my god, this song's good, and this song's good, and my sh Sean, my mixer, is like, uh, what about, and I'm like, quiet, Sean, we, we, we gotta do these covers first, and then I'll get back to original music, and then the next season comes out, and I'm like, oh my god, but like, the last season of, like, fairy tales out, and I have to do the cover for this, like, well, the original songs can go in the back again, so that's what's been happening, <laughs> uh, but I do like working, uh, like working on original music, yeah, thank you, but yeah, I, I have Hourglass, it's five songs out now, like, Spotify and all that jazz. And I have one of the songs on YouTube. I need to upload more of them to YouTube now that I think about it. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. We'll work on more. <laughs> We'd like to collab with more artists, too, for original music. One more question. Where are we? Time was oh, yeah. Uh, what's the most difficult uh, song that you cover? Almost. I think Veracity, which is one of the openings for Overlord, was really difficult. Um, it's actually like I was like I was looking up what my iTunes like what people are playing on Spotify, and it's like my second or third most viewed on Spotify. So I'm really glad that people like it because I destroyed my voice singing that song. It's like scree it's like screaming almost, like just yelling, and a lot of like voice acting in it. Um, that one was really hard. Uh, Jingo Jungle was really hard from Tanya of the. Saga, Tanya of the Evil, what is the English title for that show? Saga, whatever, T Tanya of the Evil, it's fine. It's that song was really hard. Hmm? You, you had to write a second Okay, cool. <laughs> so it was, it was there somewhere in the keywords, it's fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that one was really hard. Um, as I get older, I've noticed that my range has kind of like shifted down, but anime songs like to be really high-pitched for girls. So I'm finding myself now doing a lot of uh, Covers that were made, like were sung originally by guys, and doing them because uh, that's more of my natural key. But whenever I do get songs like Jingo Jung or, or, or Veracity, they have such a wide range of notes that I just have to do the original version. I'm like, well, I guess I'll die. Like, I guess I'll just scream these notes out, and it'll be fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, those two are really hard. Um, I'm trying to 
try not to do that anymore because uh, I'll do that. Like I'll record for like eight hours a scream song, and my voice will be shredded, and then Funimation will be like, "Hey, can you come in tomorrow?" And I'm like, "Oh my god, <laughs> like sure, but I'm gonna die." <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> and they're like, mm, please, no. Okay. <laughs> what is the best way for someone to audition for Foundation if they were interested? Um, so, Foundation doesn't really do open auditions anymore. I think they, I think you can like look on their website or like their Twitter. They used to have like an option where you could send in a demo reel um, and uh, like submit it, and then like if, if someone liked your demo reel, they would call you in for like an audition. Um, but I'm not sure if they do that anymore because uh, directors kind of just like are like you would be great for this role. Um, but sometimes there are auditions. But I think I think if you go onto their website, they have a spot where you can submit demo reels. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Or like, you take classes around the, the DOW area. I think a lot of directors do classes where you can kind of like do your stuff and can, like see you. But, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> No other questions, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, like, please, more questions. <laughs> so how was getting your demo done, and was the process mm. quicker or faster than you expected it to be? Yeah, so I did my demo. Actually, a friend of mine owns Soundcave Studios. Her name's Amber. It's really awesome. Oh, yeah, you did your, did you do yours with Amber, too? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah, I did mine with Amber, and she's really cool. Um, she's like a friend of mine, so I was like, I want to do, like, these voices, like, and these are kind of like this, this like the, the characters I want to do and how I want them to say, and like I want this length, and uh, pretty much like just she kind of just wrote the script and I recorded them at home, I think, and then I gave her everything. She kind of just like chose what she thought was best and mixed it, and she did a really good job. And I really like it. It's gotten new work, so obviously it worked. <laughs> Thanks for hanging with us. We'll see you guys. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, she's really cool. Highly recommend her if you guys are in, in oh, yeah. the Dallas Fort Worth area. Ever. I never expected the process to be so quick. Yeah, it is really like, quick. Like, yeah. finally, like, drove into the studio, I'm like, she's like, all right, th this never really takes more than two hours. And right, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, this is totally going to take two hours. <laughs> Check my watch when I'm done, like, for 45 <laughs> minutes. Mm -hmm. It's like that with some shows, too. Like, I do, I do some, I've done some shows with Sentai where we've just knocked out the entire, uh, like, 12 episodes in, like, nine hours of recording. And I'm like, is this possible? We'll find out. Like, <laughs> Yeah, the editing process is what takes a lot of time. Oh yeah, yeah. Poor Amber, love her, bless her soul. <laughs> um, but yeah, go ahead. For a full length, what is your production budget? Ooh, the if budget. You're, if you're cool with answering that. Um, it depends on uh, it depends on the um, instrumentalist. All the instrumentalists have different rates. I try to make them like even, so I'm not like cheating anyone. Um, and then. Mixing will be its own rate. Um, it depends on if I want to do art with it. Um, art can be really expensive. I've spent like two thousand dollars on art. I've spent four hundred dollars on art. There's a range depending on how much you get done. Like you know, like a full body, half body, all that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. That and it depends on the animation, how long the song is. Is the song is five minutes? Obviously, it's gonna be more expensive than a two minute song. Um, uh, I was doing filmed videos for a while because they're really cheap and I could edit them. Myself, it really was me with the camera, um, but I like the aesthetic of the animations more, so I, I dish out a little bit more. Um, they can be they can be expensive. I, I don't want to just like dish out numbers. So they, 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 there's a range. They can be either like cheap, like under a thousand, or they can be like four or five. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why the lovely people at Patreon, all my patrons are amazing because they literally make it possible for me to like hire artists and like do like the like the big like videos that I do with like the Naruto video. Like, the silhouette video I did, and like the Attack on Titan video I did, like that's 12, 13 pieces of art that literally take an artist like a month to make, and I'm able to fund that because of that. Um, but yeah, without it, I think I would be living in a box somewhere in my car home <laughs> to fund all my videos. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try to like uh, pay artists what they um, deserve. I think it's um, a lot of artists are like, oh, like it'll be like ten dollars. I'm like, no, like <laughs> no, like you're so good, like you deserve like the standard. So I try to like be good to everyone. Yeah, support artists. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys checked out the artist alley? Is it good? I'm really excited. I want to see. 
Like I have some time tomorrow, I'm gonna swing by. It's my favorite part of going to cons is checking out all the art and like meeting the artists because you never get to like meet them in person. So excited for that. There's a question over here, I think, unless I imagined it. No? Are you sure? You guys playing a joke on me. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Um, I'm most excited for an artist alley. I mean, I'd be lying if I said anything with plushies. I always have to get a few, uh, which I'm hoping to like sell more of my sightings so that I can have more room in my suitcase to bring more back. Um, I'll never forget, I went to Acon in Dallas. Okay, <laughs> I went to Acon in Dallas and I think I bought like half my plushie wall. I think I walked out with like 100 plushies. And I was really the drug lord of plushies walking out of this con. Like, there's little kids' faces, like, okay. Cause I had like bags and bags of plushies. I lived in Dallas, so I was like, I can just like put these in my car and drive home. Like it'll be great. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'll ever do that again. Though. I like, didn't really think about it until I saw my credit card statements later. Uh -huh. Don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, excited for the plushies, and I'm excited to like just look at all the art. Maybe get some business cards. Like, that's how I that's how I plan for future videos. That's how I find new artists. That. Just to walk around and have fun. <laughs> Look pretty hard, it's always fun. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? No, we only have 10 minutes left, so yeah. Okay. Uh, my favorite song uh, was Cool Lady Seeds. Yeah. And uh, how, how, uh, how, uh, how did you produce that? Uh, you know, um, that one was the first and still. Bye! Thanks for joining! <laughs> See ya! Come tomorrow! Okay. <laughs> uh, Cruel Angel Thesis was, was fun. I've always loved Evangelion, and that was for the Nostalgia album because there were a bunch of like old songs. Because uh, a lot of cover artists are like, oh, I have to do like what's new and popular and trendy. And I'm like, but what if I did like the opposite of that? Like, because like these songs are cool and like no one really like clicks on them anymore. I mean, everyone has them like in their iPod already, but I thought it'd be fun to like revisit them and give them like their own little flair. But that was a lot of fun to do. I didn't realize how many backing vocals Cruel Angel Thesis has. Um, there's so, there was like, maybe there was like 10 or 11 vocal tracks for that song. Just like oohs and ahs, like I had no idea, like it was, it was crazy uh, just doing all that. But I'm singing Cruel Angels tomorrow. I'm very excited for that. Yes, love that song. And it's really funny, uh, it was like my fourth or fifth most played song on Spotify, but whenever the new dub came out, now it's like the first song. So it's hysterical to like watch the like uh, algorithm and like the analytics like just spike <laughs> like this last month. So that's been great. Um, but yeah, I love that song. It's a lot of fun. And the, the lyrics were really interesting. The lyrics are very poetic and like lots of large words, which is very difficult to fit into the like meter um, in English. So I tried to believe in those words, but it was kind of hard to like work around them. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. Glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> Come here live tomorrow. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah. What are some of your favorite animated shows? Favorite animated shows. I loved Avatar. It was Avatar? beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Avatar was really good. I loved that growing up. I loved Teen Titans growing up too. Good shows. Um, all the Gundam shows. Really loved those. Uh, Inuyasha was a big one. Tony yeah, Kenshin. Those are great ones. Uh, yeah, I own. I collect cells now, like the animation cells. Uh, like the, the different frames, and so I have some from um, Inuyasha and Sailor Moon, obviously. They're really beautiful to look at. Um, oh, those are some of my favorites. Oldies, but goodies. My favorites now are Haikyuu. I love Psychopaths and Tackle Titan. And a lot of other shows that I just never think of. Everyone's like, what's your favorite shows? And I'm like, but I have so many. Like, how can you choose? Like. <laughs> Good like comedies or good thrillers? Like there's so many to choose from. But yeah. Thank you. You can't go wrong with good volleyball boys. <coughs> Sweet children. <laughs> um, but yeah. I think we're almost done. And so if anyone has any dying questions they must ask. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this one's more animated. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> um so like if you've ever gone on like any kind of forum whatsoever, you just look at like the comment section under like any video. You, um, <laughs> like one of the one of the big things people always argue about now is um, obviously like in our generation we grew up with like the big three, right? Mm -hmm. So it'd be like uh, Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach. Yeah. If you had to pick a big three now, what would your big three 
be. So, so I really liked Bleach the manga. I was reading the manga. I finished the manga actually. Really good. Uh, the artist draws really good looking guys. Just gonna say that. Um, the really that part, that part has amazing. Um, I think I would choose Bleach only because I was a fan of it before it was an anime. But um, yeah, but I think is Full Metal Alchemist count? I guess not. Yeah. It's more of like a classic. What, what would your like? I mean, I guess out of I don't I don't know like what your consumption of anime mm -hmm. is now, but like out of the shows that you like have seen or watched, like what would you consider to be your big three like now that are like current? Ooh. Like, you can't do One Piece even though the animation looked good. Like, that. Okay, yeah, there's so many episodes of One Piece I've never gotten to. There's just so many episodes. Um, I like Kaleidostar, which is an anime that no one really hears of. It's like a circus anime. It's really good. One of my first ones that I purchased actually imported from Japan. Really good, really good show. Love that one. Uh, Haikyuu. And... Um, I guess Psycho Bass is really good, too. Uh, those three, I think, are the ones that I would watch. I, I consider like anime, like my favorites, are anime that I would watch over and over and over again. Sometimes certain shows kind of lose their like, suspense after a while. Like I love Attack on Titan, but I don't think I could watch it like over and over and over again. Because um, it kind of loses its flavor, I guess. It's all about the shock value. It's all, yeah, it's all about like, the suspense, you know? It's like watching an action movie like seven times in a row. Um, but good show though. Good show. Like, animation's beautiful. But I think those are, would be my big three. Um, yeah, I have a weird aesthetic. Like, I honestly watch shows more for the music than anything else. Um, like Face Day Night, gorgeous anime, amazing soundtrack. Um, I'll Know a Zero, okay anime, amazing soundtrack. Um, Guilty Crown, okay anime, please don't kill me on this. Amazing soundtrack. But like, <laughs> people are always like, what? But yeah, yeah, I listen more to the soundtracks, which go figure. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> so many good shows. Need to watch more anime. I don't really have time, but I'm trying. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I think yeah, I think we're pretty much done. But yes, tomorrow at three to four, there's a concert on the main the main stage. Main stage. No, the yes. main event. Main main event. Main main event hall. I think it's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah, over there. It's gonna be great. The angel yeah. pilots. It's really awesome. Uh, but yeah, I'll do cool angel sneaks. It's it'll be great. Evangelion hype. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. Very excited. You've been awesome. Thanks for asking me so many questions. <laughs> You're not pulling out of you.